Hello, it's Duncan. I promised last episode to look at using the screenplay pattern to help make our acceptance tests more expressive. So, this week, I'm going to look at using the screenplay pattern to help make our acceptance tests more expressive. As with all simple ideas, this can be made terribly complicated. The sort of thing I had in mind was just be able to say, I have Val, Alison is some sort of actor in our interactions, and then I want to say when Alison deletes a set of items, then I can check the current stock list is something. And the nice thing about this approach is it humanizes it and also it allows us to express interactions with multiple actors. So we might have an interaction that started with an administrator doing something and then a user doing something and then a manager doing something else and so on. In that case, the administrator and the user and the manager would be different actors interacting with the system. It turns out that as with all simple ideas, this can be made terribly complicated. Here is Google's top hit for the screenplay pattern. It's Serenity JS. And looking down here, we have design principles. We have five elements. We have this amazing diagram here that shows actors have tasks that are made up of interactions which enable abilities, which enable questions, all of which interact with the system under test. And it's an awful long way down here before we see anything at all approaching. I'm still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. Interactions are finally actually a test. Describe an online shop. A wait actor called Absit attempts to send a post request to something with something. Well, I think this is the very antithesis of customer readable tests. So maybe we'll stick with the simple version for now and work out how to get this to compile. First of all, we need an actor class. Let's create one of those. I think in here we'll do. Well, that's good enough. And now back here, we want to be able to say Alison deletes. So Alison is an actor. Let's create a member function, which is actor deletes. I suppose this should be called items. Okay, then how do I implement deletes? How is it implemented at the moment? Well, that's here. And you can see that this delete is a strategy that's set in the different types of tests that actually implement this contract. So for example, the delete items directly tests says the way I delete is to ask the fixture to delete directly. That is an extension here that just says, let's get all the IDs and we'll ask the app that's inside the fixture to delete the items with IDs. The key thing here is that we need access to the fixture to get the app, or in the case of HTTP, the roots, or when we're using Playwright to actually start a server for our actor to interact with. Going back, we could make this work by moving Alison down into here and giving her the fixture, which is the receiver in this when block. So that means I can add a parameter to the constructor like that. Now, Alison, the actor, has access to a fixture. And I think for now, I'm going to get a bit cheeky. I'm going to take this actor class out of here, cut it, put it up at the top here. So it has access to this delete here and say that if our actor has access to the delete, then deletes would just be fixture, which would need to be a val, I'd need to remember it, dot delete items. So that's using this extension function defined here. I can't do that at the moment because our actor class isn't actually a member of this class. No, quick fix doesn't work, but we can just mark this class as inner and that works. Does it pass all the tests? Well, let's find out. Let's run all of the subclasses. There we go. And you can see that that ran the test that using Playwright with the browser, some HTTP with no HTMX, some HTTP and the directly one that we saw here. So that's got us running, but it's really not very elegant. What I think I'd like to do is move this strategy here how we actually delete into subclasses of actor. So there'd be an HTTP actor and a direct actor and a playwright actor, each of which would know how to manipulate this fixture in order to get the effect of deletes. Let's see if we can refactor our way there, keeping things running. I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull out a superclass of this actor. And before I do that, I'm going to rename this thing as Dell me actor, because when we're done, it wants to be gone. Okay, now I can say refactor this and extract superclass. And I'm going to put it in this top level here. And we're going to call it just 
actor and it is going to have the fixture and deletes. Delete is going to be abstract and the fixture is going to live here. So let's do that. That's good. We'll just check everything runs. These are slow because the playwright ones are running up a browser. Right then, what I want to do now is have each one of the subclasses of this be able to create its own subclass of actor. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that there is an open fun create actor that takes a fixture. And for now, that's going to create the Domi actor, and we're going to use it here. So we're going to say create actor. So at the moment, all of our subclasses are using this. Let's go to the directly one. Here it is. I think I'm going to split that so we can see them both. And what I'm going to do now in this test is I'm going to say that we want to override create actor, given a fixture. And in here, instead of saying super create actor, we're going to return a direct actor that doesn't exist yet given the fixture. Let's create one of those. We're going to put it inside this file like that. And for some reason IntelliJ doesn't want to do the right thing which is pass the fixture into there. Direct actor needs to implement deletes and we know how it can implement delete. It can use this fixture delete directly. So in here we can say this is fixture dot delete directly the items. So now for this delete items directly tests, when we call create actor here, we'll be building one of these. It will be calling this fixture delete directly and this delete here won't be being called, I think. And we can show that by plugging in just a to do there, which will throw if it is invoked. Let's run just that test as it will be nice and quick. Oh, ah. This test here I haven't migrated, so we're going to do the same thing in here. We're going to have to say we'll create an actor. We'll say when Alison is an actor, Alison dot deletes, and the same in here. Are we good? Phew. So now they're over in delete documents directly tests. I think we can inline this all together because it's only used here. There we go. And we have fixed one of our tests that implements this contract. Let's do the browser ones next. We go here, down, and we'll find the browser tests. Here they are. And we'll have the same pattern. We'll take this, put it in here. This is going to be a playwright actor. That doesn't exist, but it's going to look an awful lot like this. And its implementation is as before fixture dot delete with playwright the items get rid of that i'm going to replace this with to do and i'm going to inline that check we're good by running the tests that's slow but just to remind you why if we made this true and ran it you'll see that it runs up a browser and actually does pucker things with it. Good. I'll just go off and do the HTTP ones as well. Okay then, let's now run all of those tests. And now all of our delete strategies here have been replaced by the code inside the actors that are polymorphically created. We can go in here, I think, and get rid of this delete. So we'll do change signature on the constructor. We'll delete that refactor. That you can see is simplified this and this. It's not compiling in here. Ah, because our Delmi actor no longer has access to the delete, but that's fine because we want to delete it. And that means that we want to make this not the default, but abstract, so that we rely on the subclasses. Am I right? I am right. So that's sort of okay. There's just one place that it isn't as we wanted at the very beginning. And that's that this actor here, I have to create once I've got a fixture. And I build the fixture here, 
So it's only really available in this block here. In other words, I can't cut that out of there and put it into there because this hasn't been called yet. So this fixture just doesn't exist. Now I could solve that problem by building the fixture outside the given, but that kind of breaks this language I've been building. Now I don't have the fixture available when I create the actor, but I do have it available when I call this deletes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that, putting it back here, and then I'm going to add the fixture into this. So it's going to go here, and I think that means that I can add a first parameter to this abstract here, which is calling items one for some reason, but I think it should be called fixture. Let's refactor. So now deletes takes this fixture, and it's neatly fixed up all the subtypes here. And because we gave this parameter the same name as this property, this here is actually binding to the new parameter, which is what we want. Let's have a look at the other places we call create actor. Here you can see IntelliJ has fixed that up as well. And that one. So I think everything should run. And does. Brilliant. And now that I think means that if we go to this create actor, we don't need to give it a fixture because the actor doesn't need a fixture. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say delete that property. It's left these ones around here. So let's remove that one there. And I'm going to go to actor and I'm going to find all of its subtypes. So we had direct actor we've just done, HTTP actor, remove HTMX, remove playwright, remove. Okay, back to our acceptance contract. Get rid of those as well. And now create actor doesn't need the fixture either. So we'll get rid of it from there. Are we good? We still are. And now that means that I can move Alison out of here altogether. And in fact, I think I could just move her to the top level property of this test. So now we have Alison deletes. I don't need to create her here. And I don't need to create her here. Marvellous. There's just one wafer thin problem now, and that's this, this here. We had some nice readable tests, but this is ugly. Can we get rid of it? Well, we could if Alison deletes was a method on the fixture, because adding in the hints here, the fixture is our receiver here. So let's go to the fixture. I'll move it over there. And in here, I'm going to add fun actor. So this is now an extension function on actor defined as part of our fixture. And that won't need a fixture because we are the fixture. It can do actor dot deletes, except that the actor here is the this. That's this one here. And actor deletes up here requires a fixture, which is the actual class here rather than the receiver here. I think that makes sense. That's quite a cute trick. It means that instead of now calling this thing, which is this method on actor here, if we remove this, we now call this extension on fixture here. Ooh, I'm going to delay gratification by fixing these ones as well. And there, and run. That's really quite cute. And also means that this odd deletes language here can stay in our fixture. Because here in our actor, we can rename this to be delete. And the language stays the same here because it's in our fixture and it's our fixture that calls this dot delete on the actor. Maybe make this a little bit clearer by saying this at deletes. Nearly finished, I think. There's a little warning here. What's that saying? We're calling the non-final create actor and constructor. We could get rid of that by moving Allison to the constructor. So we'd say that we want Val Allison is an actor. That would allow us to get rid of that. And now if we just fix up the compile errors, our delete items acceptance contract has Allison is a direct actor, allowing me to get rid of that. Allison here is a playwright actor. She is an HTTP actor in here. And an HTTP with no HMX actor in here. Wonderful. So that's our delete items acceptance contract. 
we're going to want to do the same thing in add item acceptance contract. So I think I'm going to move this actor into its own class. And then we'll do that with its subclasses as well. So we have one here. Let's pull that into its own file. Ah, we didn't take with delete form with it. Here it is. They're all going to be in the same package. So I think maybe I'll just make that internal to fix that. And then the HTTP actor likewise. There they are. And then finally, the playwright version in the browser tests. I'll take that and I guess that in there. Oh, and show running. Hmm, that's interesting. That came from our delete items browser tests here. And it's a constant at the top level. I think it makes sense to say that the actor should know whether it's showing us the browser. So I think I'm going to pass show running into here. Add that as a parameter like that. Now the playwright has that, which will be a val, which apparently could be private. And if I made it true, would pop up a browser. Splendid. So then there we are. We've got our actor, who's Alison. And when we need an action, we can ask Alison to do it for us. I'm going to commit that, see what the AI thinks. Refactor delete items acceptance contract to use actor pattern for test parameterization. I think it's probably fair, although the actor pattern means something different to me. I think we just say actors and commit. Okay, then that's the delete items done. What about add items? I suppose I could do that myself, but maybe the AI could do it for me. I have a cunning plan that might actually make that work, but I'm on holiday this week and the beach is calling, so you'll have to wait to next week to find out what that is. It's going to be good though, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and enable notifications so that you're woken up next Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching.